You all right, love? Yes, I'm fine. Are you sure you're all right with this, Dan? Yes, I'm fine. It's only six bits of wood. But listen, we can still get Terry, you know, to come in. It only costs a couple of quid, no, love. I don't need Terry, thanks very much. Are you sure? Yes, it's oh, great. Thanks. Right. Ah, jeez. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> Here you are, love. Oh. I'm going to pop out of the shop. All right. Yeah. Hiya, love. Hiya. God, you haven't moved. You haven't moved your hands either. Well, no, I, I'm just, I haven't got a clamp. I'm just waiting for the glue to set. I've got to keep my hand here to keep it up. Listen, I'm going to go and run a bath. You going to come up? Yeah, in a bit. You sure? Yeah, I'll see you All in right, then. then. Jesus Christ, Darren. You look like shit. You haven't been here all night. No. I sneaked up late last night and I got up early this morning. But your hands are still holding it up. I know, it all fell apart. Why don't we fling it out? The skip's coming in about now. Why don't we just fling it and get a new oh, it's one? It's a shame, cos it's a solid cabinet, Oh, Darren, this. it doesn't matter. We can get a new one. Oh, there's the phone. It's all right, leave it. No, go and get the Jan's phone. Machine. No, go and get the phone. All right. It's all right. Yo, can you take this phone? Yeah, yeah. Bye. I used to think things like this wouldn't happen if we just talked to one another. They take a very practical approach, I think, the animals. It's that was until I met my barber. Like your kangaroos, I mean, they look stupid, don't they, with all that hopping about, all the hoppity hoppity hop and everything like that. Mm. I use every gene in my body to try not to engage him in conversation. They sort of think, well, you know, like some hopping about, it's a bit boring, really, hopping all the time. But on the plus side, I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. You know, because I hope really well. You While know, my barber gassed on, it struck me I was one of a growing number of people who try not to say very much. Professor, a tiny monster has escaped from the labs and is heading from the... In the country's living rooms, people aren't saying very much. About two inches. My God, it'll get lost. Our restaurants are full of couples not saying very much. It's chilly, isn't it? Were they always not saying very much? Busy for a Tuesday. Right from the start. The potatoes are nice. Hmm. In the age of mass communication, have we run out of things to say? So you got here all right then? Mm. Uh, Colin rang this morning. Said he'd call again tomorrow. Mm. I see the government's trying to persuade more people to take out private pensions. Mm. Something I saw on the paper. Yes, I read it too. Two knives. Remind me again when we should get the taxi.
Excuse me. Yes, could, could I see the list of dessert wines, please? Sure. Why do they do all them experiments on animals? Don't know. I think it's don't very know. cruel, don't yeah. you, yeah. really? I mean, because I think, you know, if the scientists, right, mm. if they're so keen on the animal shape, mm. then they could use things which look like animals, you know, like maybe kids' puppets or something like that. Mm. You know, I was reading, actually, in China, mm. they actually use Kranger's testicles mm. for, uh, for anaesthetics and painkillers and things like that. You know, it's still a little bit cruel. I know it's a mm. shame, you know, they use a Kranger's testicle, but by the same token, if it was your child, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Mm. You know what I yeah, mean? I, I mean, you see these people out on the pavement, you know, with these uh, petitions, and they got a photograph of a clanger with all his guts hanging out, mm. you know, and it makes you feel a little bit guilty, but I still think you've got to go for it at the end mm. of the day, because mm. let's face it, the clangers, they'd remove one of our testicles if they had to, mm. you know, I don't know why they want to do that, mm. but, you know, that's up to them, the clangers, really. I mean, I suppose we could help them, do you think, maybe in a way, I don't mm. know, like, maybe, have a card made or something, mm -hmm. which says, in the event of my death, mm -hmm. then I would like one of my testicles to be used to cure a clanger, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel sorry for the clangers because uh, mm -hmm. they live on the moon, which is really boring. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? No. There are some social occasions when we'll happily talk to people we'd otherwise avoid. For example, at the Christmas lunch. I had a sobering experience last year when I went to my annual Victims of Medical Negligence Christmas party. They took my leg off there, but they kept the foot on. So I've got a wooden leg, but a real foot. I've just got one artery going from my thigh right the way down to my ankle. Suddenly, I noticed over in the corner the boss of a local firm and his only employee. They were having what must have been the smallest Christmas office lunch in the world. Remember that supply truck that only delivered half the stuff and I had to get you yes, I do. chasing <laughs> after? It was heartening to see their annual bash go so well. Bolivia, There's a, in, oh, right. in the Paz, it's the highest capital yeah? in the world, apparently. Yeah. Oh. Speech, speech! <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'd just really simply like to take this opportunity to thank you, Michael, for all your work this year. It's been a fantastic year. I'd like to think that any of the success that we've had at the firm this year has not been just down to me, because I know he's had a difficult year with the house and with Get you. Get on with it! Yeah, well, <laughs> um, No, but seriously... Up. Yes, thank you. Michael, I'm trying to make a speech here, all right? Just really like to say, please raise our glasses to you, Michael. Cheers. <laughs> It went so well they agreed next year to hold a company dinner dance. Even so, they left in separate taxis despite living 30 yards apart. They then didn't speak again for a fortnight. They cut all down there. They folded the flaps. And now if I could have the rings. Aren't the two rings? No. I haven't got a ring, Father. What do you mean you haven't got me a ring? Well... I thought, yeah, I could get you a ring, but I don't know what kind of rings you like. What do you mean you don't know what kind of rings I like? Look, I wanted to get you something nice, so I thought, here's 40 pounds. You can get yourself anything you like with that. Oh. There you go. So, there's no ring? <laughs> no, as I just said. Well, you can, she can get a ring. You can get a ring. I, I don't mind. Well, actually, I know exactly what I'm going to get with this money. What are you going to get? Well, it's Kate's birthday on Tuesday, and I thought I'd get her a present, and I saw this really nice print, so I'm going to get her that. You're not going to get something for yourself? It's my money. I can spend it on what I like. OK, I? OK. <laughs> no, I just thought, you know, I mean... <laughs> actually, that's not a bad idea. A print's a good idea. Carry on, Father. Hello, Hello. Hugh. I was just thinking how other people scare us. Come in. Yeah. So, Hugh, what about courting? How did you go out with a lady? Well, you couldn't just jump in the bed with a lady, but then you go along to her house and you ask her parents if you could knock her up and get her on crack. If they said yes, you'd take her along to a junglist mash-up. It was called Jungle then, not drum and bass, so it came later. So what sort of things did you go out and see of an evening? 
Oh, we go to the music halls. All the big, all the variety acts were there. And there's Lily Savage and Kirsty Young. I remember Chris Tarrant was working the halls. Uh, he'd come on and he'd say, "But well, we don't want to give you that." <laughs> it was very funny for the first year. I've decided to make more of an effort to meet people by booking into a hotel to take part in a communications conference. That's because I did some research and I found out that at any one time, 80% of the population are in hotels having conferences. I suppose it's because conferences are splendid ways of starting up friendships with people and from there going on never to see them ever again, which is great. The conference is looking at whether we've got so used to doing all our communicating through handheld gadgets that scenes like this will become more common. Yeah, of course, the, the latest thing now is these WAP things, isn't it? The WAP oh, yeah. Things. Um, small, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. Tiny. Yeah, tiny. Tiny. Yeah. I mean, we're absolutely obsessed with miniaturisation. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll end up eating miniaturised ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they'll come up with a tiny Titanic. Yeah. And people will want to go on it. They'll pay a thousand quid a ticket <laughs> to get a seat on board a ship that's two inches long. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they'll get a hundred people on it. And they'll still claim it's unsinkable. And then, once we get bored with making things really small, we want to make things enormous. And James Bond equipment will be huge. Yeah. And all his films will feature huge gadgets. So he's, he'll have laptops the size of a goat or uh, sugar cubes you can sit on. All that day, I enjoyed knowing that for once I could have a decent conversation with people who were happy to talk to me. In about two years' time, we'll have smart mirrors that can predict your reflection and swimming lanes you can fold up and put in your briefcase for the journey home. They're planning to issue fax paper that cries you know, for bad news. It's going to be fantastic. Or fitness buns, big cream cakes that make you thin. Though I enjoyed our chat, I had a sneaking suspicion that the reason we don't talk to people is because we're worried that if we do, we'll sound like my barber. Because there's, there's saying the internet is fantastic, but they always make these exaggerated claims about anything that comes along. Because mm. they, they made exaggerated claims about the piano when it took over from the harpsichord. Yeah. And they said that right. with the piano you could get better tunes and a nice softer sound mm -hmm. and online banking facilities. Mm -hmm. But in the end, look what happened. We just used the piano as, a, as an outlet for gambling and pornography. Mm. Repeat after me. I, Anne Jane Taylor. I, Anne Jane Tiela. Take you, Balbeer Rai. Take you, Balbeer Rai. <laughs> oh, daddy me. What are you doing? <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. Don't you see? Because you're Pakistani. I'm Indian. You can't know whatever. It's just, you know, it's funny. It's just a joke. Don't you get it? Don't get it. You get it, don't you? Yeah, you absolutely. It's funny. Or you're Indian. <laughs> you're the Indian. <laughs> You know, someone once said to me, Oh, you big nose jock wop. Come on, lighten up, it's only a joke. To which I said, Well, I don't find that very funny, Mr. Lloyd Webber. Then I poured half a pint of cream down the front of his trousers and hit him eight times in the back of the head with a ladder. He didn't like that very much, so I said, Come on, lighten up, it's only slapstick. You should have got yourself a waterproof husband. <laughs> Jokes help us cope, like for Jill, who lost her husband Keith in a drowning accident. Perhaps he thought he was a salt water Keith. <laughs> Duncan dead Hugh. <laughs> or for Keith's friends, for whom humour helped him through the trauma of just having fished him out the water. Let's chuck him back in! Here we go, here we go! Here we go! Are you actually talking at the conference? Or? Well, in, in a way, I'm, I'm doing the comedy bit at the end. Oh, that's you? Yeah, the after dinner thing. Oh, yeah. it's really good because you know, it's serious all day. I know, and you want to be. I'm just, actually, I'm a bit nervous about it because I, I think they're all expecting sort of traditional jokes. Right. And I'm not really, I haven't really mastered the traditional joke form. You know, the I say, I say, I say, um, my fly's got no nose, then how does it smell? Well, it's got a thousand eyes, and that sort of compensates. Yeah. You know, um, how many kangaroos does it take to change a tap? They can't. At best, they can locate the source of the water leak by boinging up and down inside your house to see if that somehow affects the water pressure. 
but even then they're going to be hard put to do anything about it unless one of them happens to have the right copper connecting mechanism in her sack of babies. What's big and small at the same time? A big egg. Right. <laughs> Hello, television. Right, how are we doing? Well, we haven't got any sport. Why not? It's too expensive. OK, I think I might be able to help there. Um, I spoke to Don King's people about the Lennox Lewis fight, and we could put out the shadows cast by the fight. How much? A pound. Well, that's great. You film the shadows and you broadcast the shadows? Just yeah, the shadows? yeah. That's so Yeah, good. just For the shadows. Can we get any more? Well... Well, I know somebody at the London Marathon probably can get the shadows cast by them. Oh, that's thousands of them. Those costumes, exactly. they'll Loads. run. Mickey Mouse. It's on for about four or five hours. Thousands, thousands. thousands. thirty thousand shadows. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Boat race. What about the boat race? The shadows must boat be racing about them I can try. Good. Good. How much yeah. would that be, the boat race? Uh, well, I guess a pound. Oh, I mean, they're mostly a pound. With me, with me. Yeah. No sport. Drama. Drama. Yeah. ER. ER. Yeah. How much would that be? Uh, well, I haven't checked ER, but I know that Friends is a pound. Oh, Pride right. and Prejudice. Pound. Can we get Darcy's shadow? Yeah, definitely. Oh, no. For a pound? Oh, definitely. Oh, well, that bit where he comes out of the, the lake? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, for a pound? <laughs> animal Hospital. Oh. <laughs> Could we do Animal Hospital? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, because you'd have little shadows of oh, mice yeah. and hamsters, yeah. like but big shadows of, like, Labradors. Rolf and Rolf. Yeah. Yeah. And Rolf. Yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, really. yes! yes! So this good. is very, I didn't very good. It's intelligent television. We're saying to people that we are going to appeal to your imagination with shadows. Yes. It's like radio. Brilliant. Exactly. It's like we're saying to them, in the era of too much information, we're giving them insufficient information. We're saying, work it out for yourselves. Work it out for your bloody That's selves. That's what's so good about it. You're very, very good at television. You are good at television. You are good at television. I didn't realise I was so, quite good so good at television, good but I am. You are very good at television. We're very good. We're so good at it. We deserve to be here. We're good at television. You're good at television. You're good at television. I'm good at television. Are you going to this sort of the artificial intelligence thing yes, this afternoon? Yes, I am, yes. It's quite creepy, it's isn't it? About, I don't know. Actually. I don't know. Because, the, I mean, there is this sort of theory that we make computers more and more intelligent and, and so we then allow computers to do the things that we normally do, like fishing and stuff like that. And eventually we'll start making computers that can do things that we can't do. Right. Like come up with the opposite of the word placard. And then suddenly computers become so intelligent that we'll die out. I mean, that's the theory. But I think that is bollocks. Because I think what will happen is they'll make computers that are like human beings. But if they are like human beings, then mm. fundamentally they'll be lazy and they'll want to get other things to do the jobs that they don't want to do, like men. And what they'll do is they'll breed men that can remember things and take notes for them, and they'll have little laptop men, and it'll be the craze for computers to think, um, oh, let's come up with a, a more efficient way of booking cheap flight tickets. And what will happen is you'll have computers with men strapped to the front of them that um, shout to men attached to the front of travel agent computers. And then what will happen is they'll invent a man that's more intelligent than computers. And then what will happen is this man will be enormous and computers will die out. So everything will be back to the way it is, except that men will be 50 feet high and we'll all kill each other in a nuclear holocaust. But that's not the point. The point is we're in control of our own destiny. Hello, lads. How are you? Fine, are you uh, planning to stand around here all day, are you? I'm waiting for my girlfriend. Are you uh, selling something? What? What do you mean, mate? You live around there, do you, sir? I've lived around there all my life. You must have seen me a few times. I've never seen you before in my life, sir. So what's the problem? What have we done? No problem at all, sir. It's just commissioner's orders today. No obstructing the public highway. Bunch of black bastards. Excuse me? You heard what I said. You big bunch of very black bastards. That horse just spoke. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. I just heard your horse make a racist remark. No, it didn't. What? <laughs> Prove it, darky. Uh, you heard what? that. I know you did. You heard that. No way, your horse mate. just spoke. You saying our ass is a racist? Well, yeah, Definitely. Just just you heard it. Remarks to us. We what don't do that anymore in the police force. That's all in the past. What are you going to do about it anyway, you black blacks? Rubber lips. What? Excuse me. What? You're scared of horses, are you? Gypsies. I'll have you any time. Gypsies. Oh, you a gypsy. Calm it down. You're calling a gypsy. Oi, oi, relax your horses, mate. Come on, here, you black puss. Piss off back to where are. Fuck it, I your horse is so points. confused. Hey, look at you, yeah, you packies. No, 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 hang on, mate. No, you have to go back to the What are you talking about? You control your horses. Spit gits. Probably tussers. You're all the same. Come on. Jewish towelheads. What is he scared of horses, are you? I'll cut you up. What's big and small at the same time? A big egg. 
I'm going to do my comedy routine now, so I'm a little bit nervous as to what their tastes and attitudes are like in there, because we're all different. For example, we all have different ideas as to when it's the best time to make fun of a public figure who's died. Like, we all have our own dead Princess Diana jokes, but I got into a lot of trouble for what I did, which was to do a whole stand-up comedy routine consisting entirely of dead Diana jokes five minutes after the crash, while in Paris going through an underpass in a white Fiat Uno. And if you don't all improve communications technology fourfold by 2005, I'll fucking kill you. Thank you. Well, thank you to the uh, East End Thug for an inspirational talk. Right, well, now to keep us entertained for a bit, we've got a terrific comedian. Um, I'm told he writes for Steve Coogan. Please welcome Armindi Inucci. Thank you. Dogs. We've all seen them. We all know what they look like. But my dog has got no nose. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, how does it smell? And here you can see some of the proposed solutions. Use touch as a substitute. Use taste as a substitute. But the answer in this particular case is terrible. My dog smells terrible. That's very important. Moving on now, I'd like to introduce you to two people. My mother-in-law and me. And there you can see I'm not saying anything. And what I'm not saying is... I'm not saying my mother-in-law is fat, but when she goes around the house, she goes around the house. There you can see my mother-in-law, and in fact, she's literally going around the house. What I was referring to earlier was her being so vast that she actually enveloped the house. Turning now to Europe, and the engine room of Europe is Germany. Germany is opening Europe up to wider markets such as China. And the question is, if Germany and China were to come together and, say, open up a German-Chinese restaurant, would they market it successfully? In other words, have you heard about the German-Chinese restaurant? If you have, you'll know that 20 minutes after people eat there, they're still hungry for power. And they're the highly successful logo of the Nazi party. Well, I know that time's pressing, so I just want to rush through the next few points. There you can see a picture of Leslie Grantham in pantomime. And the key question here is, where's his career? And there you can see a chart illustrating that it's behind him. Or now to a picture of my grandmother doing a striptease. And there you can see her getting her teeth out for the lads. A dyslexic pimp buying a warehouse. A picture of a man with three pieces of ham on his head stuck between two houses. And underneath there, his name, Muhammad Ali. On out a horse there in a pub. You can see the barman asking the key question, why the long face? Just see an illustration there of a Mexican farman. And there's his children, Jose and Jose B. So will you be coming back next week? 